our protagonist is named Charlize Linta, the sole daughter of Duke Linta. She developed a crush on Archduke Calix, the half-brother of the current emperor. The first time she caught sight of him, an obsession overcame her, leading her to the point of attempting to eliminate his partner to claim him. In doing so, Charlize met her own demise due to an unforeseen turn of events. This established Charlize as the villainess within the confines of this fictional world. Reincarnated into this world as Charlize, she found herself fortunate to have been reborn at a juncture where the main characters had yet to cross paths. This gave her the resolve to evade the future where her life would end. To survive, Charlize penned a letter to the Archduke and vanished into a distant territory. Unlike the original tale, this time, as the protagonist in Charlie's role, she chose to lead a peaceful and authentic existence in the countryside. However, this tranquility was not fated to endure. One day, she received a note from her father, urging her to return. After a year in the countryside, Charlie's journey back to the capital began. During her journey, Charlize encountered a young boy being bullied by adults. She intervened, stopping the bullying, and since she couldn't leave the child alone on the streets, she decided to temporarily take him under her care. Upon reaching home, her father was astonished to see Charlize with a child, immediately assuming the child was hers. In response to his reaction and accusation, Charlize firmly denied that the child was hers. Curious about the reason for her father's summons, Charlize inquired. Her father explained that chaos had gripped the capital due to the survival of the royal heir. Charlize was bewildered, prompting her father to elucidate that the royal heir was the individual believed to have died seven years ago. Astonishingly, the Archduke had learned of the heir's continued existence. Charlize remembered that the young prince played a pivotal role in the novel's plot. In the original story, it was the female main character, Irian, who discovered the royal heir and brought him to the Archduke. However, since the royal heir became attached to Irian and was reluctant to let her go, she had no choice but to remain in the home of the male main character. This marked the beginning of their gradual love story. Charlize was puzzled by her obligation to return when the ongoing issue centered around the royal heir. Her father explained that, since she had sent the Archduke a letter before he could finish his sentence, Charlize had already deduced his concerns. Her father was apprehensive that Charlize, known for her obsession with the Archduke, might cause a commotion upon discovering the Archduke's nephew. Surprised by Charlize's perceptiveness, her father attempted to clarify. Nevertheless, Charlize was already aware that her father intended to confine her within the capital to prevent any unexpected actions. Charlize Linta was a woman who could be deemed eccentric. Consequently, her reputation had been tarnished to the point where she could no longer rectify it. Her plan was to remain silent and escape after the royal heir was found. Charlize inquired about the timeline for locating the heir. Her father admitted uncertainty. Nevertheless, the royal heir's distinct characteristics were widely known, implying that his discovery wouldn't take long. When her father mentioned that the royal heir had black hair and blue eyes, their attention immediately shifted to the young boy Charlize had saved. Upon observing the child for a few moments, they realized he possessed all the known characteristics. Charlize was shocked, considering the possibility that she had inadvertently brought the young prince with her. Later that day, they had the young child take a bath while both Charlize and her father were disheartened, hoping that the young prince wasn't in their midst. When asked about his parents, Charlize responded that she hadn't seen them, and the young boy similarly had no recollection of them. When inquiring about the child's home, Charlize concluded that the child had been living on the streets. When her father suggested returning the child to where Charlize had found him, she swiftly rejected the idea as she didn't want to abandon a child on the streets. Returning the child to the Archduke would be disadvantageous as the Archduke would likely assume that Charlize, known for pursuing him, was using his own nephew to gain favor. The core of the original story revolved around the meeting of the two main characters, facilitated by Irian's discovery of the royal heir. If Charlize were to return the child, she questioned if it would be acceptable to alter the story. After careful consideration, Charlize decided she would rather locate the female lead in the young heir, allowing the story to proceed naturally. After cleaning up, the young boy promptly visited Charlize and expressed gratitude for her care. When the child inquired whether he could address her as Miss Charlize, acknowledging her as the first person to show him kindness, Charlize sighed, understanding that the gratitude should rightfully belong to Irian. Nevertheless, Charlize's plan for a peaceful life had been completely disrupted. She could only hope to be left alone. While enjoying their meal, Charlize explained to the young child that since the meal had been prepared beforehand, there wasn't much for the boy to eat. She hoped the boy wouldn't perceive it as them being mean to him. The child responded that he would never think such a thing, 
and he found everything given to him delicious. He then confessed that it was the first time he had eaten something so delicious and expressed his deep gratitude. Charlize then noticed a small mole on the child's cheek that matched the description in the original novel. Having the same description her father had mentioned in what was in the original novel, Charlize believed the child must be the missing prince, the legitimate son of the emperor, and his wife. However, the supposed child was meant to have died alongside his mother seven years ago. Because of that, the emperor's half-brother took over the throne. With the sudden appearance of the prince, power over the throne would shift as he had the sole right to claim the throne over any other member of the royal family. This meant he had the power to remove the current emperor from his position. Charlize believed the current rulers were already aware of this fact and would not relax until they found the royal heir. She thought that bringing the child to Calix would be the best idea, as he was likely the only one powerful enough to protect the royal heir. Realizing he might have the only heir in his home, Charlie's father couldn't handle the stress and excused himself to take some stomachache medicine. When Charlie's father left the room, the heir felt depressed, assuming Charlie's father had left because of him. Thinking that sitting next to him, being dirty and smelly, would make everyone sick, Charlie's became angry and asked who had accused the heir of being dirty and smelly. The heir explained that everyone always seemed to feel bad because of him. The people who bullied the heir had told him that he always made them lose the taste of their food. Hearing the child's tragic story, Charlize grabbed the child and placed him on her lap. She then reassured him that just by looking at him, she already felt in a good mood. When Charlize told the child that his uncle would protect him if anyone ever spoke to him in such a way, he was surprised to learn that he had an uncle. While looking at the child, Charlize knew she couldn't let him wander around the dangerous streets by himself. Even though the story might change due to her actions, she chose the child's safety above everything else. Charlize informed the child that although the house they were currently in was huge, the child's uncle's home was much bigger and he would be spending his days there. The child immediately became sad, knowing he would be separated from Charlize. He then asked if he would ever see her again. Charlize couldn't give a straight answer and mentioned that she and the child's uncle weren't very close, even though the truth was that Charlize was a known stalker of his uncle and would likely be misunderstood if she appeared at his home. Even though she kept reassuring him that he would be safe and happy in Calix's home, the child still sobbed with sadness. He then hugged Charlize and told her that no one was a better person than her. Charlize then remembered that in the original novel, the child would become attached to the first person who helped him. Due to the child's demand, Charlize was left with no option and told him that even though she couldn't promise him frequent visits, she would go see him once in a while. Meanwhile, Calix was still busy searching for his nephew. He received a report that they had found three children with black hair, but none of them made the magical stone respond. The stone only responded to its original owner, which was the prince. Growing more worried, Calix's pursuit of his nephew was becoming limited, and time was running out. Even though a week had passed since they announced the search, they still couldn't find the child. Unsure if the current emperor had already gotten rid of the child since they couldn't find him, Calix knew they would be anxious as well. After not seeing the current emperor for five years, Calix knew they wouldn't sit still, knowing that the legitimate successor was still alive. Calix's only priority was the safety of his brother's child, and he didn't care what the emperor thought he would do. Reflecting on how his brother had asked him to protect his nephew, Calix could only hope that his nephew was still alive and would give anything to anyone who brought him to safety. Inside a carriage, both Charlize and the child were present when a small bump in the road caused the child to accidentally hit Charlize. The child was mesmerized when Charlize asked if he was okay. To avoid detection, Charlize had prepared an ordinary carriage, but it didn't seem to be safe to travel using it, though. Before heading to Calix's home, Charlize gave an instruction to the child. When he arrived at his uncle's home, he must say that he came across a flyer on the street that matched the same description as his, and he must never mention Charlie's name as they supposedly didn't know each other. Charlie's warned the child that if Calix ever found out that she was the one who sent the child to him, he would be angry, potentially leading to them never seeing each other again. The child made a pinky swear to Charlie's that he would never tell anyone about his relationship with Charlie's. Upon arriving at the front of the mansion, the child looked worried and wondered if he should tell Charlie's that he wanted to stay by her side. He pondered it deeply, not wanting to cause more problems, or else he might never meet Charlie's again. Seeing him head toward the front door, Charlie's felt relieved. Knowing that Calix would take good care of the child, she didn't need to worry about him. However, the problem now was that her interference had ruined the initial encounter between the male lead and the female lead. Although Charlize wasn't a big fan of the novel, it was because of her that poor Ilian missed the chance to have a better life, and Charlize felt sorry for her. 
With no other choice, Charlize decided she shouldn't meddle in their affairs anymore. She instructed the driver to head home. Upon reaching her home, Charlize spoke with her father and expressed her wish to sponsor poor artists. This request surprised her father. In addition to poor artists, Charlize also wanted to include an orphanage, as she knew that the Grand Duke would send the kids who lived with Sasha to the orphanage. Her father was touched by her words, and the maids in the house overheard her request, becoming the topic of their gossip. Charlie's actions were now perceived as different, as she had never shown care for others aside from the Grand Duke. With tears of joy, her father held her hand and told her that he knew she had an affectionate heart. He then reminded Charlize to ignore the opinions of others, as they are ignorant. Charlize thanked her father, but she knew that the original Charlize was a crazy stalker who faced a lot of criticism for her actions. Her father told her that he would speak with the banker right away, and that she should take the 5,000 deltons he had with her. Charlize was surprised, as the amount was too much. She believed that a thousand would be more than enough. Her decision further melted her father's heart, and he assured her that he would provide whatever she needed. The original Charlize was bossy and arrogant because her father had always indulged her too much. Several days later, Charlize received a lot of pocket money from her father and immediately withdrew the money as planned. Exiting the carriage, Charlize saw a woman being belittled by a man. When the woman took off her hood, Charlize immediately recognized her as Irian Lapranch, the female lead of the novel. Coming from a humble family background, Irian had endured disdain from others since birth. If everything had gone as planned, she would have been destined for the male lead, and Sasha would have been the turning point that changed her life. However, because Charlize intervened and was the first person to find Sasha, the story's flow was now disrupted, including Irian's chance at a better life. Charlize would be filled with remorse if she ignored Irian's situation, so she planned to help her. When Charlize approached a kneeling Irian and told her that she had excellent talent, Irian was nervous, viewing Charlize as an intimidating person. Charlize asked if Irian would be willing to sell her painting. Irian was surprised by the question, as she hadn't expected Charlize to be interested in her painting. Meanwhile, at the Archduke's home, Calix wanted to read a book to Sasha. However, since Sasha declined, Calix simply requested that Sasha stay by his side. Calix hadn't felt relieved and happy since finding Sasha, his brother's child. He assured Sasha that he could do anything without getting tired. As Sasha finally fell asleep, Calix was curious about how Sasha had found his way to the Grand Duke's estate by himself. While observing Sasha, Calix heard Sasha calling out for Sister Charles, which piqued his curiosity. Calix couldn't get the name out of his head and spoke it aloud. His friend Libin was surprised and asked why he mentioned that name. Calix responded that Sasha kept mumbling the name in his sleep and even cried while calling it out. Assuming that Charles had done something heinous to Sasha, Libin was infuriated and wished to arrest her at once. Calix told Libin to calm down, as Sasha did not cry out of fear, but rather, it felt like he missed someone. Libin had his suspicions ever since Sasha arrived at Calix's home. Sasha had told them he had been living on the streets, however, he looked clean and tidy. When Libin mentioned that he would ask Sasha himself, Calix responded to Libin and instructed him to investigate silently and find out who rescued Sasha. Calix knew that Sasha was a smart child, which led him to think that there must be a reason why he wasn't saying anything about his savior. Libin understood the instruction and asked Calix about the ceremony to announce the prince's existence. Calix responded that it was better to postpone the ceremony since the news had already reached the empress, and they had no idea what would happen next. While carrying out his tasks, Calix told Libin to find the girl named Charl as soon as possible. Meanwhile, Charlize was confused that there had been no news from the Archduke ever since Sasha had lived with Calix for four days. Charlize was anxious about it, but she knew that she would not likely be invited to the ceremony. However, she hoped that everything would be back on track once Irian attracted Calix's attention in the announcement ceremony. Back where Irian was belittled on the street, Charlize asked Irian if she would be willing to sell her painting to her. However, Irian refused to sell and asked for the painting to be returned. Charlize was surprised by Irian's rejection and assumed that Irian might have thought that Charlize was mocking her. Irian, a freelance artist, was a down-and-out aristocrat. With the meager income of a freelance artist, Irian couldn't afford the maintenance expenses of the edifice. However, her parents couldn't let go of the edifice in the imperial city. 
The aristocratic world is full of unhappy morganatic marriages, but Irian's parents were an exception, as one of the very few happy aristocratic couples. Her parents established the rule that the house, which is full of their memories, mustn't be sold under any circumstances. Charlies knew that Irian had sacrificed herself for her family, as she was willing to face disdain from other aristocrats and make a living by drawing. Even though she was born into an aristocratic family, Irian still had to do many different jobs to make a living. When Charlize asked for the reason why her offer was rejected, she was surprised when Irian told her that Charlize didn't want her painting, as she only wished to purchase it out of pity. Charlize assumed that Irian's character would be an affectionate girl as described in the novel. She then responded to Irian and told her she does not pity her. Irian had her own suspicions since Charlize saw her struggling on the streets and was insulted by other people. Irian immediately assumed that Charlize was helping her out of pity. Charlize then mentioned her name and told Irian that she is the type of person who must get everything she wants at all costs. She then asked Irian if she looked like someone who would lend a hand out of pity. Irian's doubts vanished when Charlize told her that her painting was beautiful and that it was the first time Charlize had ever seen a kitten with such vigilance. Before leaving, Charlize saw the girl giggling in silence and assumed that Irian had opened her heart to her. After getting rid of Irian's harasser, Charlize's only remaining concern was Calix's announcement. While having their meal, Charlize was informed by her father that he suspects that Sasha is not the former prince. He knows that Sasha is a good kid and only hoped that he wouldn't be easily dismissed if there was proof that he was not the former prince. Charlize reassured her father that her assumptions were correct, as Sasha's identity had been thoroughly checked and he also matched the description. Charlie's father is now more concerned and curious why Calix couldn't recognize his own nephew. Thinking hard about the situation, Charlize was curious if Calix is protecting Sasha from the Empress by hiding him. Although Sasha is still alive, his bond with the royal family is deniable. Charlize thought that Calix is only making an attempt to protect Sasha from imminent dangers. Thinking hard about Sasha's situation, Charlize couldn't stop herself from thinking, what if Sasha was not really the former prince? She then became mentally drained, just like her father, stressed and overwhelmed. All of a sudden, their butler opened the door and announced that they were in big trouble. When asked what the problem was, the butler handed an invitation letter to Charlize to attend the ball at the Grand Duke's edifice. Charlize's father was shaken after they received the invitation and assumed that Calix had purposely invited Charlize to humiliate her in front of the other aristocrats. Charlize knew that Calix's character wasn't like that. Even though he disliked her, it would still be unlikely. Charlize still felt something strange because in the original novel, she was not supposed to be invited. As the ball was a special occasion for introducing the prince to people, many aristocrats would likely be invited. Among all the aristocrats, there was only one person who was unwelcome, and that would be Charlize. In the novel, Charlize, driven by her strong determination and desperate desire, took all the risks to attend the ball, only to witness Calix and Irian together. When Charlize could no longer contain her jealousy, she put Irian's life at risk. With the new Charlies, considering the contents of the novel, she knew that it would be futile to keep repeating it. The difference in the plot between the original version and the extended one made Charlies quite uneasy, but it was still none of her business. Her father was now very anxious and wanted to see for himself what was happening. However, she stopped her father, telling him that she would not be attending the ball. When asked if she was sure about her decision, she responded that instead of going to the ball, she would prefer to visit their family's estate. She considered that a better choice than just idling around in the imperial city. Charlie's decision brought her father to tears as he now saw his own daughter as a mature woman. He told her that she didn't have to take care of the family's business. Tired of her father's ramblings, Charlie stood up and explained herself to her father. With confidence, she told him that she no longer desired the Grand Duke. After a moment of silence, her father still didn't believe her, even though Charlie plainly told him that she was not lying. Charlize confessed that she didn't like the Grand Duke and couldn't even remember his face. She stated the facts. The most surprising thing was that even though she could remember all the characters from the novel, she could hardly remember the male lead's face, Grand Duke Calix. She then repeated to her father that she wouldn't be attending the ball. However, little did she know that she would break her own word and attend the ball. Since it was the first time her father had shown so much concern for her, Charlize didn't have the heart to reject his request. According to the novel, Charlize never believed in her father's love for her. She always doubted it and acted as if she didn't care. When Charlize heard a voice apologizing for being late, she saw Calix and expected him to be a very handsome man. 
after he removed his coat, Calix confessed that he had finally found his nephew and introduced him to all the aristocrats, Sasha Rossell Alopin. The people were surprised and could immediately see the resemblance to the former emperor. After seeing Sasha, Charlize could finally put her mind at ease. When Sasha met Charlize's gaze, she was taken aback when Sasha turned his head away. Charlize assumed that Sasha was instructed to keep his distance from her, which upset her. Feeling someone's eyes on her, she looked to her side and saw Calix looking at her. Charlize panicked as she didn't know how long Calix had been staring at her and whether he realized that she was trying to distance herself from Sasha. Moreover, Calix was now heading towards her. Calix thanked Charlize for attending the ball and asked if he could have a word with her. Charlize, very surprised, knew that the people around them were surprised by the Grand Duke's actions as well. She also knew that if her father knew she was speaking to Calix, he would immediately prepare stomach medicine. When Charlize asked what the Grand Duke would like to discuss, an image popped into her head, a scene that had neither occurred in the novel nor in Charlize's memory. Also, when their eyes met, the harmony and the slow passage of time felt unreal. Charlize immediately thought if it was an omen for the future. Thinking that the Duke didn't die in the novel, she wondered if he might die trying to save her. When Calix asked her if she was alright since she didn't look too good, Charlize became even more nervous as she could see the future every time she looked at Calix. As Calix and Charlize stepped onto the balcony, Calix immediately asked her if she was the one who brought Sasha to the edifice. He added that Sasha kept mumbling Sister Charl in his sleep. With no other options left, Charlize confessed that it was indeed her, but she hadn't been seeking the prince and had just been passing by when she saw him. Charlize was surprised that Calix knew and thanked her for rescuing Sasha earlier. When he said he would give her anything she wanted, Charlize initially refused but then had a change of heart and asked if the Grand Duke would truly fulfill every wish of hers. When questioned by the Grand Duke about her true desires, Charlize realizes that following the same path as in the novel would likely lead her to jail, abruptly ending the story. However, Charlize's assumption proves incorrect, as she couldn't foresee the future when she gazed into his eyes. Now, she's curious whether there's a way for her to glimpse the future once more. She then informed Calix that she had a gift for him and inquired whether he could give the necklace to him. The gift Charlize had prepared for him was a necklace adorned with luminous gems, possessing the ability to glow in the dark. Originally intended as a present from Irian to Sasha, circumstances shifted and Sasha, still an orphan at the time, had been living on the streets. After Sasha's true identity as the former prince came to light, he became the target of resentment and envy among his peers. Ultimately, these children imprisoned Sasha in a hidden chamber, and the necklace became his sole source of solace. As a result of this incident, Sasha encountered the goddess of light. However, in the current narrative, Irene couldn't present the necklace to Sasha. With no other option, Charlize had to give it to him in her stead. Observing Calix's expression, Charlize was apprehensive that he might suspect her of placing a curse on it. To dispel any misconceptions, she explained the necklace's nature and clarified that it had no connection to dark magic. Calix was taken aback by the gift and embraced it with joy, viewing it as a warm welcome. Calix conveyed that arranging a meeting with Sasha on that day would prove challenging, and instead, he would extend an invitation for them to convene. Charlize experienced a twinge of disappointment for being unable to meet Sasha. Nevertheless, she found solace in the prospect of receiving an official invitation letter, recognizing it as a remarkable opportunity. Meanwhile, Sasha grew curious about Libin's directive for him to feign ignorance of Charlize, along with the cautionary warning labeling her as dangerous. As Libin offered Sasha another drink, a stranger approached, cautioning Sasha about Charlize. Rather than instilling fear, this revelation only stoked Sasha's excitement, leading him to hope for a romantic connection between Charlize and his uncle. Amidst this cautionary conversation, Calix arrived and inquired about the stranger's actions. Swiftly, the stranger apologized and departed. Calix then turned to Sasha, questioning his solitary state and Libin's whereabouts. Sasha explained that Libin was fetching him another drink. When Libin returned with the drink, he inquired about Calix's offering, prompting Calix to pass the present to Sasha and inform him that it was a gift from Charlize. Presuming that Charlize might be lingering in the corridors, Calix tasked Libin with informing her that she could now meet Sasha. Asked whether he desired to see her, Sasha's countenance lit up with delight, eager to reunite with Charlize. While walking together, Charlize was taken aback when she felt someone holding onto her dress. Upon realizing it was Sasha, she swiftly inquired about his well-being and congratulated him on discovering his family. However, Sasha's mood dampened when Charlize addressed him with his royal title 
prompting him to request that she simply call him Sasha. Inquisitive about the shift in his demeanor, Charlize questioned him, prompting Sasha to ponder and eventually ask if Charlize would consider staying by his side. A week after the grand ball, Charlize hadn't anticipated receiving an invitation so soon. Reflecting on how Sasha had wept at the ball, she found it difficult to turn him down. If she lacked the power to foresee the future, she might have already returned to her family's estate. Recalling her vision of her father sacrificing himself for her, Charlize felt a heightened motivation to uncover the truth. Lost in her thoughts, Charlize failed to notice that Sasha had grasped her dress and had only just registered his call. Charlize was startled when Sasha, holding her dress, suddenly called her name. She realized Sasha remained displeased with her addressing him as his highness and instead wished for her to call him Sasha. Charlize deliberated on it intently, however, the thought of addressing him by name seemed unbearable. Overhearing their conversation, the butler asked Charlize to grant Sasha's request. Recognizing that Calix might have permitted this shift, Charlize consented. In the library now, Sasha informed Charlize that his uncle would read him a story each night, and that an immense playroom stood adjacent to his bedroom. Observing Sasha's contentment and comfort in Calix's care, Charlize shared in his happiness and saw that he was struggling to mask his elation. As Sasha spoke about his toys, Charlize instinctively touched her head and commented on Sasha's cuteness. Intrigued by her own thoughts, she wondered if she was becoming strange. Suddenly, Sasha dashed toward her, embracing her, and expressed his joy at seeing her again, relishing her embrace. Charlize reciprocated the sentiment, expressing her affection for him. However, when Sasha questioned whether she loved Calix, Charlize was taken aback. The question surprised Charlize, as she hadn't expected the rumor to have reached Sasha. Seeing a chance to demonstrate her disinterest in Calix, she asserted that she didn't like him. Sasha's surprise was palpable as he inquired why Charlize held such sentiments toward his uncle. Her vague response led Sasha to ask if she hated Calix. His relief was evident when she clarified that she didn't hate Calix, recognizing him as a kind individual. While hugging Sasha, Charlize wondered if he might be upset due to her presumed disdain for his family. When Sasha suggested they visit the garden, Charlize readily agreed. Arriving at the garden, they spotted Calix gazing at flowers. Confused by her inability to see the future, Charlize attempted to approach Calix and lock eyes with him. In doing so, she had a vision of the future and questioned its authenticity. She contemplated whether Sasha would truly end up in the lake, based on her vision even though the novel described him being confined to a secret chamber. Looking at Sasha, Charlize discerned that the future had once again shifted. Now, she needed to steer events back on course by facilitating a meeting between Sasha and Irian as soon as possible. Charlize was taken aback when Sasha praised her equestrian skills in front of Calix. Sasha continued to extol Charlize's virtues in Calix's presence. It was evident to Calix that Sasha held Charlize in high regard, and he even displayed the gifts she had given him. Deeply appreciative of her actions, Calix offered Charlize two wishes. The first wish was to repay her for saving Sasha's life, and the second was to thank her for the gifts. Overwhelmed by Calix's kindness, Charlize was moved, likening Calix to an angel. Recognizing Sasha's fondness for Charlize, Calix humbly requested that Charlize visit their estate frequently. If this posed any inconvenience, she could communicate through letters. Thankful for the opportunity, Charlize expressed her gratitude. When Sasha asked about meeting again, Charlize assured him that they would undoubtedly reunite, with plans to include someone else next time. Charlize intended for Sasha to meet Irian during this occasion. However, during her conversation with Irian, Charlize was taken aback by Irian's request to focus solely on her art. Irian thanked Charlize, sharing that her drawings had garnered significant interest and in sales. Charlize attributed this success not to her connections but to Irian's talent. The progress in the paintings Irian sent to Charlize pleasantly surprised her. Curious, Charlize asked if Irian had plans to marry someone who cherished her exclusively. Irian was caught off guard, wondering if such a man existed or if he was likely already married if he did. Though Irian's parents had shared a deep love, she couldn't envision a similar romance for herself and preferred to spend her life immersed in her art. When asked if she truly loved painting that much, Irian responded with genuine enthusiasm. Seeing her joy at the mere mention of painting, Charlize understood Irian's sincerity. When Charlize inquired about Irian's participation in the prayer festival, Irian revealed she would not attend due to an upcoming exhibition she was preparing for. Charlize's plans had been completely disrupted by Irian's decisions. Before parting ways, Charlize thanked Irian for her company, despite her busy schedule. Though reluctant to derail the original plot, 
Charlies recognized the necessity of adjusting her plans to restore the course of events. On the day of the sacred festival, Irian had made the decision to attend alone. Curious about Sasha's whereabouts, she assumed he might be with Liban. Charlize then caught wind of a familiar voice, Rosetta Eccles. Rosetta was one of the characters who harbored animosity toward Charlize in the original novel, so she pretended to be friendly with Irian in an attempt to approach Charlize. Rosetta had heard that Charlize was present in the area and wondered if she had softened a bit. Understanding Rosetta's motives due to her past mistreatment, Charlize remained composed. Rosetta had also learned that Charlize had visited Calix's place and wanted to offer her congratulations. Initially baffled, Charlize thought this information had already spread. In response, Charlize challenged Rosetta to reveal what specific information she possessed. While the original plot remained somewhat unclear, there were certain details Charlize desired to ascertain. She also aimed to dispel the rumor of her supposed affection for Calix. Perplexed by Charlie's altered demeanor, Rosetta became curious about Charlie's intentions. Charlie's wished to make a private request, as the current location wasn't ideal. When Rosetta declined, Charlie's noticed Rosetta's attire and suggested they might get cold if they spoke outside. Confused by this, Rosetta hurriedly departed. However, before leaving, Charlize instructed her to select a date and contact her later. Charlize felt satisfied with the prospect of an upcoming meeting with Rosetta and turned her attention to finding Sasha. While wandering the area, Charlize heard voices from a distance. Investigating, she witnessed Sasha being taunted by other children. They relentlessly questioned his identity as the true prince. The mention of Charlie's name by the other children surprised Sasha. Upon closer examination, Charlie's recognized one of the children as Lord Bayer's child, the same child who had forewarned her about Sasha falling into the lake. Sasha struggled to hold back tears as Lord Bayer's child insulted Charlie's. Sasha attempted to defend Charlie's, but she interjected, instructing the other children on how to properly address her. Intimidated by her presence, the other children began to cry. Charlize questioned their tears, considering they were the ones who had teased Sasha initially. The children countered that it wasn't mere teasing, but rather they had heard that the fake prince wasn't welcome. One child shut his eyes, anticipating a slap, but instead Charlize offered her hand to Sasha and assured him he didn't need to deal with such individuals. Aggravated by Charlize's display of affection towards Sasha, the child pushed him into the lake. There was a tale that a light creature slumbered in the lake's depths, thus earning it the name Nest of the Beast God. The lake was considered sacred, and falling into it wouldn't result in drowning. Even someone of imperial status like Sasha could still breathe. However, driven by concern, Charlize chose to leap into the lake to rescue Sasha, hoping to prevent him from bearing painful memories of suffering alone in the darkness. While submerged in the lake, Charlize encountered the light creature. Although the circumstances differed from the original story, the beast god appeared due to Sasha's peril. Despite the sacred nature of the lake, which prevented drowning, Charlize found herself struggling with the sensation of her nose tingling due to the water's spiciness. Just as they began to rise above the lake's surface, Calix appeared and lifted them out of the water. Charlize felt an odd sensation and wondered why Calix was regarding her with such concern in his eyes. On the evening at the mansion of the Duke of Eludian, Sasha was resting and being cared for by Calix. Calix recollected how Sasha had shown great concern for Charlize. Although Sasha had spent only two days with her, his level of concern had struck Calix as unusual. Calix understood that warmth provided in moments of need is hard to forget. He had experienced a similar warmth from his late brother. This connection could explain why Sasha's thoughts revolved around Charlie's. Calix found himself perplexed about how to proceed. He pondered whether forcing the clans that had bullied Sasha to disband would alleviate his distress. Libin informed Calix that Lord Bayer wished to apologize to Sasha. Calix commended Lord Bayer for taking responsibility promptly, temporarily sparing him. However, Calix ordered Libin to be unrelenting in dealing with the other clans. Libin was puzzled as he recognized Lord Bayer's compliance, yet his intentional bullying was baffling. Calix then queried Libin about Charlie's condition. Libin confirmed that Charlie's had awakened and was currently waiting in the reception room. With a content expression, Calix proceeded to visit Charlie's. Meanwhile, Charlie's found herself disliking the tonic she was required to drink. Despite her distaste, she forced it down as it had been specially prepared for her. Calix, having just arrived, inquired about her well-being and suggested that she might require additional rest. Charlize expressed gratitude to Calix for allowing her to rest in his home. 
In response, Calix acknowledged his need to thank her for saving Sasha. Charlize felt even more embarrassed when Calix mentioned that he could only express his gratitude whenever they crossed paths. Calix further revealed that the clan responsible for pushing Sasha had received favors from the Empress. As Sasha, a potential threat to the Emperor's throne, posed a challenge, he was a source of concern for the Empress. Charlize's actions might lead to her being disliked by the Empress. Calix apologized for inadvertently involving her in this matter. Charlize brushed it off, as she was accustomed to being disliked by many. Calix then suggested that she reveal herself as the benefactor of the Grand Duke's family. This revelation might discourage anyone from belittling her further. Charlize understood that such a disclosure could trigger more gossip but she accepted Calix's proposal. Charlie's decision surprised Calix, who believed she could achieve more by revealing her benevolence than he had initially suggested. Regardless, Calix remained genuinely appreciative. Charlize found herself puzzled by Calix's kindness, wondering if he had forgotten how vexing she had been lately. Conversely, Calix pondered the transformation in Charlize. She had been in love before, then abruptly returned to her territory after a year. Since then, Calix had been curious about her thoughts. Nightfall arrived, and Charlize reached her home. She was taken aback as her father personally welcomed and embraced her out of concern. Charlize reassured her father that she wouldn't have perished even if she had fallen into the lake. Her father remained apprehensive for her safety, while the maids wept with relief upon her safe return. The situation felt awkward for Charlize. She hadn't expected to worry everyone merely by falling into the lake and fainting. After taking her medicine twice a day, Charlize began to wonder why she couldn't foresee the future and sensed that something unusual was unfolding. When Charlize opened the door and spotted the light creature, she feigned that she had entered the wrong room. The creature then addressed her, expressing the desire to communicate. Charlize understood that a contract existed between the Beast of Light and Sasha and inquired why it was at her home instead of with Sasha. The creature explained that Sasha feared it and asked whether Sasha would like it if it had the same form. Charlize struggled to respond adequately to the question. However, when the creature mentioned that it wished to express gratitude, she quickly offered tips to alter its appearance. To ensure Sasha wouldn't be frightened, Charlize planned to consult him first. Yet, she proposed this with a condition. In the original novel, the nest of the beast god was rumored to contain numerous treasures. Uncertain of her next move, Charlize grappled with a decision. Suddenly, Charlize received two letters, both from Irian. The contents of the second letter shocked Charlize profoundly. Its news had the potential to render her usually strong-willed father faint-hearted. Additionally, Charlize recalled receiving a letter about participating in Empress's team for a tea party in the original novel. At the palace of the Empress, Empress Katerina Linick expressed gratitude to Charlize for accepting her invitation, as she wished to thank her for saving the Emperor. Charlize responded with a gracious gesture and also extended her thanks to Katerina for the invitation. After a brief moment of silence, Katerina inquired about the cause of Charlize's distress, sensing that something was amiss. Charlize, however, evaded the question, stating that it was nothing. Unbeknownst to Katerina, Charlize possessed deeper knowledge about the Empress. In the original novel, the Empress was referred to as the druggist due to her skill in concocting potent poisons. The cup of tea positioned in front of Charlize was a vessel the Empress had used previously. It was the same cup she often offered to her targets. Charlize suspected the possibility of poison being present on the cup's rim. If luck were against her, consuming the tea could prove fatal. While holding the teacup, Charlize commented on its exquisite beauty. Katerina responded by revealing it as her personal favorite. This revelation brought a degree of relief to Charlize, knowing that the cup held personal significance to the Empress. Katerina's curiosity led her to question whether Charlize had intentions of broaching the subject of marriage with the Grand Duke, given that she already held his favor. Taken aback, Charlize replied that such an eventuality lay in the distant future. Katerina, however, asserted the feasibility of the union, citing Charlize's status as a benefactor to the Grand Duke's family and emphasizing the indebtedness they owed her. With a gentle grasp of Charlize's hand, Katerina conveyed her determination to facilitate the marriage proposal. Charlize, perceiving the lack of sincerity in Katerina's words, recognized her covert plan to employ marriage as a means of infiltrating the Grand Duke's household as a spy. Familiar with the narrative from the novel, Charlize understood that accepting this offer would lead her into a perilous entanglement with Calix, ultimately resulting in her demise. Thus, she declined Katerina's proposition, asserting her disinclination towards marriage, especially with the Grand Duke. Elaborating further, Charlize explained that Calix's kindness had an expiration date, 
and she was unwilling to subject herself to uncertain probabilities. Katerina released Charlie's hand, comprehending the rationale behind her refusal. Before parting ways, Katerina suggested a future discussion on the matter and arranged to contact Charlize later. As she walked through the palace corridors, Charlize inadvertently collided with an individual. Following her apology and the individual's response, Charlize was taken aback by the familiarity of the person. The individual proceeded to enter the Empress's chamber and knelt before her. Observing Katerina's demeanor, the man deduced her favoritism towards Charlize. Katerina disclosed her imperative to eliminate the prince swiftly in order to safeguard her throne. Considering her lack of heirs, she tasked the man with identifying a person capable of influencing Charlie's decisions and inquired about individuals frequently encountered by Charlie's. The man reported that Charlie's frequently met with Lady Irian Lapranch of the Marquis Lapranch lineage and that the two exchanged letters regularly. Katerina instructed the man, identified as Marquis Van Eschel, to establish contact with Irian. Upon returning to the Reinter residence, Charlize felt drained from her interaction with Katerina, and the burden of multiple daily appointments took its toll. Charlize inquired about Irian's whereabouts, to which a maid informed her that Irian awaited her indoors. Entering the room, Charlize was warmly welcomed by Irian. Charlie's surprise deepened as Irian extended congratulations. Upon inquiry, Irian explained that the felicitations were due to Charlie's apparent success in capturing the Grand Duke's affections. Irian's excitement about Charlie's impending wedding was palpable. However, the prevailing rumors only intensified the pressure on Charlie's, who secretly wished for Calix to marry Irian instead. Charlie's questioned Irian about the purpose of their meeting that day. Irian presented an invitation to Charlize, referring to a forthcoming event known as the Young Author's Night. Charlize recognized this event from the original novel, and Irian's enthusiasm about it was infectious. Irian mentioned that works by Marquis Van Eschel would be featured and inquired if Charlize intended to attend. Charlize confirmed her attendance, eliciting joy from Irian. Charlize was aware that Marquis Van Eschel, who aligned himself with the Empress early in the original narrative, might participate in the exhibition. Speculating that the Empress could also be involved, Charlize anticipated the upcoming event. A week later, at Duke Rinta's residence, Charlize was anxious upon realizing that the letter Sasha had expressed interest in seeing had gone missing. She deemed the letter inconsequential due to its lack of the official Grand Duke House seal, leading the servants to overlook it. News arrived that the Grand Duke's carriage had arrived at the estate's entrance. Charlize greeted Calix and Sasha outside. Just as she was about to respond to Calix's gratitude, a vision of an alternative future disrupted her thoughts. Realizing that she was now in the position of being bullied, Charlize recognized that participating in Marquis Van Eschel's exhibition was not a viable option. Nonetheless, she managed to convey her pleasure in seeing both Calix and Sasha. Concerned that Sasha might be upset, Charlize apologized for her delayed response, explaining the mishap with the servants who inadvertently overlooked his letter. However, Charlize was taken aback when Sasha expressed how much he missed her. Suppressing her emotions, Charlize chose not to embrace Sasha, opting to apologize and assure him of greater caution in the future. Sasha's unexpected apology surprised Charlize, as he believed she found him bothersome. Eagerly clarifying, Charlize dispelled his misconceptions. When Sasha inquired about the possibility of writing to her again, Charlize enthusiastically affirmed his ability to do so. She recounted how he had even copied Libin's writing and sealed it in an envelope. Charlize's suspicion arose when she learned of Sasha's addition of a seal to the letter, suggesting it might have been tampered with. Charlize now needs to investigate the clerical manager. Lost in thought, Charlize didn't notice that Sasha was calling her name. Charlize apologized for ignoring Sasha and invited them inside the house. The place was filled with mounds of sweet snacks, but Sasha was more amused by the cute birds that roamed around Duke Rinta's estate. When Charlize asked if he liked any animals and what his favorite animal would be, she didn't expect Sasha to respond that his favorite animal was a dragon. Sasha explained that in the fairy tale that Calix reads to him every night, a dragon always appears. Charlize just agreed with what Sasha said so as not to destroy the child's imagination. Sasha then told Charlize the details of the dragon and how it would punish the evil emperor as well. Charlize was surprised when Calix mentioned that Sasha seemed to miss her very much. Sasha became embarrassed after being exposed by his own uncle. Charlize noticed how close Calix and Sasha were as he teased the boy so casually. Calix requested that Charlize could see Sasha more often, and she agreed to the request. 
However, she would be busy in three days due to work and would likely be unable to see Sasha. When Calix asked what work Charlize would be doing, she responded that she would be participating in an exhibition called The Night of Young Authors. Out of nowhere, Charlize came up with an idea, if Calix were to come to the exhibition, he might be able to meet Irian. When Charlize asked Calix if he liked the exhibition, Calix responded that he had already paid attention to it. After some time, Sasha fell asleep while being held by Charlize. Calix then mentioned that on the day Sasha fell into the lake, Duke Bayer had contacted them to apologize for what had happened to Sasha. Charlize asked if the other families had apologized as well. Calix responded that due to the fear of the family's destruction, it was inevitable that they would apologize. However, Duke Bayer was the only one who wanted to apologize to Sasha directly. Charlize was curious why Calix was sharing such information. Calix told Charlize that if she was wondering why he was talking about it, it was because he didn't want her to worry too much. Charlize was surprised and asked if Calix had the ability to read people's minds. Calix responded that he didn't have such an ability. However, he just assumed that Charlize would think like that. Later that night, Sasha, still asleep, and Calix bid farewell to Charlize. Seeing the Grand Duke's carriage leaving, Charlize immediately called their butler and asked who sorts the letters sent to the Duke's mansion. The butler responded that the person responsible for such a task is named Ron. However, he is currently on vacation. Suspicious of the man, Charlize asked for Ron's resume. The butler willingly agreed to prepare Ron's resume. However, Charlize didn't expect that the butler would ask if there was something wrong and she just told the butler that there was nothing. Charlize then asked when Ron had taken his vacation. Charlize became more suspicious when the butler responded that it had already been a week since Ron took his vacation. Checking through the letters, Charlize didn't find it coincidental that Ron would ask for a vacation on the day that Charlize met with the Empress. Charlize then remembered that Ron couldn't concentrate at work and would often borrow money from other servants. Charlize had a hunch and needed to confirm it by asking directly. The day of the exhibition, the night of young authors, had arrived. Charlize was pleased with how the place looked. In the original novel, the exhibition almost failed due to a fake artwork incident. By observing the artworks, Charlize was able to distinguish between fake and real pieces. Gradually realizing that she could differentiate between the two, she was surprised. She then looked for Irian in the crowd. When she finally found Irian, she was surprised to see Irian with Marquis Van Eschel. When Irian noticed Charlize's gaze, she immediately greeted her. Irian then happily introduced the works to Charlize. The first was the work that received the most attention in the exhibition which was the portrait that Marquis Van Eschel had sculpted directly. Irian was enthusiastic as she explained that the work had been done by Marquis Van Eschel at the age of 16. Charlize knew that Marquis Van Eschel didn't participate in exhibitions just for fun, and it seemed that the Empress had started her plan much earlier than in the original novel. The Empress was facing unexpected financial problems due to her father, Duke Lunik, being a gambling addict. The Empress needed money to get rid of Sasha, so she instructed Marquis Van Eschel to sell the portrait. After enthusiastically presenting Marquis Van Eschel's work, Irian then introduced her own works to Charlize. Charlize became more concerned as she stood looking at Irian's pictures for a long time, and now everyone was focused on the paintings. Charlize remembered that the explosion would probably occur just before the auction, and that she was the only one who knew the culprit. Seeing someone about to bump into Charlize, Irian shouted to alert her. However, Charlize was surprised by the falling glass. To everyone's surprise, Charlize managed to catch the glasses with both of her hands and then returned them to the kid. However, as she handed the glass to the kid, he failed to catch it, causing Charlize's dress to become dirty. She immediately apologized and thanked the kid for forgiving him and ruining her dress. Charlize then felt uncomfortable as the kid continued to apologize. She recalled Sasha's habit of repeatedly apologizing when they first met, and wondered if the kid might somehow be connected to Sasha. Charlize asked why he was carrying so many glasses. The kid responded honestly, explaining that the man with a beard had instructed him to clear all of the glasses. Charlize noticed an injury on the kid's hands and asked him to follow her. The people at the exhibition assumed it was over for the kid, even though they had no idea what would happen next. Inside the room, Charlize found the child beggars who were with Sasha. They had been sent by Calix to the orphanage. Charlize was curious about why one of the orphans was working at the exhibition. Charlize then handed the kid a gold object containing medicine and pointed out that he had an injury on the back of his hand. She assured him it wasn't some strange medicine and, as he reminded her of Sasha, she promised to take care of him. When Charlize described Sasha's physical features, the kid immediately realized she was talking about Belle. 
Bell was the name Sasha went by when he was living on the streets. It was true that the kid knew Sasha. In the original novel, there was a child named Angel who took care of Sasha, and Charlize assumed from the kid's reaction that the kid's identity as Angel was correct. After cleaning her dress and helping the kid, Charlize looked for anything special happening at the exhibition. She immediately sensed an ominous feeling and remembered the future she had seen where a bomb would go off. Realizing that the bomb might not be real, Charlize pondered and finally understood the reason to divert people's attention. A mystery man secretly pushed Marquis Van Eschel's work, but Charlize caught him in the act. The mystery person turned out to be Ron himself. Ron tried to explain, claiming it was a misunderstanding, but Charlize didn't believe a word he said. She was curious because she had heard the exhibition was crowded, and there had been a loud noise inside, so Charlize immediately went in. Charlize asked Ron if he deliberately missed the letter from the Duke's family. Ron thought the letter was nonsense, so he secretly ripped it up, read it, and left it somewhere. Still, Ron insisted it was just a mistake. While interrogating Ron, Charlize heard a familiar voice. The person didn't expect to see Charlize at the exhibition. It was Calix, who immediately instructed Jay to search Ron. Ron couldn't defend himself when Jay found a magic bag. Calix still had more to investigate and asked Charlize for her thoughts on the matter. Charlize was also curious. Calix ordered Ron to be taken to Duke Rinta's mansion, where the rest of the investigation would take place. Charlize hadn't expected Calix to come to the exhibition, even though Calix had mentioned that he only cared about the exhibition. Calix explained that the exhibition's auction was to serve the Empress's Black Fund. Most of the works were fake, and Calix came to the exhibition solely to expose the truth. However, upon reflection, the Empress didn't need to steal the works, and there might be a different purpose this time. Charlize agreed and found it quite strange. Even recently, the Empress tried to take advantage of a worker in Charlize's house. Charlize had declined the Empress's offer, wondering if that's why she's being targeted. Worried for Charlize's safety, Calix asked if the Empress might threaten and kidnap her in the future. He advised her to buy time by compromising and using the exhibition's purpose. At that moment, Calix vowed that he would truly protect Charlize. An awkward silence followed, and to break it, Calix asked if Charlize would try to avoid it. Charlize responded that she was looking for someone with brown hair. Calix was impressed that Charlize could recognize the color, even though brown is common. Before Charlize could continue, Calix cut her off, saying they needed to leave as the situation was becoming more uncontrollable. Before departing, Irian called out to Charlize, expressing concern for her well-being. Charlize apologized for making Irian worry. However, Irian was distracted by someone behind Charlize and introduced herself to Calix. Charlize was initially surprised but then saw the scene she had been expecting. Finally, the meeting of the main characters from the original novel had occurred. Charlize felt relieved when she saw Calix and Irian finally meet each other. She wondered if it was finally time for her to leave so they could have their moment. When Calix mentioned how much Charlize praises Irian's work, Charlize overheard and was curious what he was talking about. She then felt a heart-fluttering atmosphere and assumed that it came from Calix and Irian. Irian mentioned that Charlize mentions Calix a lot to her, which surprised Charlize as she had never spoken of Calix to Irian. An unexpected situation unfolded in front of Charlize. She had hoped that Calix and Irian would fall in love, but instead, Irian became Charlize's wingman and made her look good in front of Calix, which somehow piqued Calix's interest. After some time, Charlize finally met with Ron. Ron immediately bowed his head and told her that he had already told her everything he knew. Charlize, who was now in a serious mood, asked Ron why she should listen to his excuses. Staring at the torture tools, Charlize said that the rules were very simple and asked Ron if he could answer her question. When Ron agreed, Charlize asked him what the author had given him in return for ruining the exhibition. When Ron mentioned money, he was confused when Charlize started counting down on her fingers. When the last two fingers were about to count down, Ron could no longer hold his fear and told Charlize that it was a position that could last forever, like Duke Lennox. Charlize remembered that Duke Lennox was the Empress's father. She asked Ron what was wrong with Duke Lennox. Ron confessed that there was a game with the highest probability in the casino. Because of the high probability, it is a game that attracts so many people that it is difficult for nobles to participate. Such a position receives scrutiny even though it's only been sitting for about an hour. To confirm, Charlize asked if Duke Linick earned a bit from it. Ron responded that the Duke earned a lot. Whenever there was a rumor that money was pouring into the whole neighborhood, it created a scene where the casino was crowded with people. 
It was thanks to the Duke that the casino only accepts pre-orders now, but a person promised Ron that he would be given that position all day. Charlize felt something weird, since the Empress bitterly hated her father, Duke Linnick. The Duke's crazy gambling caused the whole Linnick clan to fall, and because of that, the Empress went through financial hardship, which no one knew. However, Charlize was still curious why she left the Duke alone. Charlize was sure that it was not because of the love between father and daughter. Charlize had an idea and assumed that Duke Linnick was like the casino promoter. In the original novel, Charlize was curious if the Empress contributed capital to the casino. However, Charlize couldn't remember even if she tried to think about it. Charlize was now annoyed since the situation wasn't written in the original. In the end, Charlize plans to pretend not knowing what the Empress does for the time being because acting rashly would become the Empress's target. Charlize was now contemplating what to do with Ron. Although he stole the items at the exhibition, it was still not enough for him to be killed. When Charlize told Ron that he deserved to die, Ron immediately begged for his life to be spared. When Charlize agreed to spare his life in exchange for sharing the name of the author who instigated him, then he would be fully forgiven. When Ron agreed to the condition, Charlize immediately told him to get out and never appear in front of her again. Later that night, while sleeping in her bed, Charlize dreamt of being accused that it was her fault. Multiple times she was told that it was her fault. When Charlize finally woke up, she was surprised as she remembered that she was only going to lie down and rest for a while, but was somehow already dreaming. She felt like her physical strength was drained. She then called a maid and asked her to bring her some medicine. The maid immediately assumed that it was the medicine that the Duke bought from the Empire's top apothecary to help Charlize regain her stamina. However, it was so bitter that she would always turn the table over and knock over and shout to have the medicine thrown away. Charlize then remembered that she did say those exact words and hated herself for her crazy personality. When the medicine was finally being consumed by Charlize, the maid was so happy and told her that it would be less difficult if she drinks it all in one go. After drinking the medicine, the maid praised Charlize and gave her a candy. The maid was so happy because Charlize used to not take any medicine, which made Duke Green to worry about her so much. Charlize remembered that the Charlize in the original novel was often sick. No matter how hard the Duke tried to cure her, nothing worked. The reason why Charlize's personality became the opposite despite growing up in love, was also because of impotence. The maid was so relieved when Charlize got better much faster and her anxiety had subsided. Charlize thanked the maid and reassured her that she would not need to worry too much anymore because she would take her medicine and get healthy. Meanwhile, at the Empress's palace, Katerina was amazed at how lucky Charlize was. She had hoped that Charlize would get a bad reputation when someone stole the artwork. She then instructed the servant to be handled carefully. Katerina now had to use a different method for Charlize. Charlize discovered that Ron had left the mansion and that things had gone awry. She assumed that the Empress would likely devise a new plan. Charlize presumed that the Empress intended for her to surrender, as the Empress controlled her subordinates through a simple method, undermining their abilities and compelling them to submit voluntarily by needing their will. The Empress's subordinates were concerned and left with no choice but to depend on the Empress. In the original novel, Charlize was also one of the Empress's subordinates. However, this time, it wouldn't be easy for Charlize to be controlled, as the management of the Duke's guards and servants had become stricter. Even if it were the Empress, she wouldn't be able to meddle with the southern granary. Negligence could jeopardize the Emperor's reputation. Duke Rinta had established himself as the true ruler of the South through the Merchant Guild, gaining control of the Empire's finances as a founding family of the country. This position was consistently stable, largely thanks to the Merchant Guild. The Empress would need to employ strategies to tarnish the reputation of the Merchant Guild. Charlize understood that significant changes take time and that until then, she needed to identify who was aiding the Empress. At the Capital Guard Squad, Charlize underwent interrogation by the commander of the Capital Guard Squad. When asked about the supposed bomb Charlize had heard, she responded that she was unsure whether it was a bomb. Asked if she had heard only a popping sound, Charlize described what she had heard as resembling thunder. When questioned about her delayed arrival compared to the other visitors, Charlize explained that her legs had inexplicably immobilized her. She added that they should inquire with the Grand Duke about his business when asked how she had met him. Seeing the commander struggle, Charlize recognized that he would face difficulties reporting to the Empress. After the interrogation concluded, Charlize felt drained. She was then informed that the mayor wished for her to receive a mysterious pouch. Curious about its contents, Charlize opened the pouch. Upon seeing the medicine inside, she concluded that she had caused the empress to worry again. 
When the guard remarked that the candy suited Charlie's taste, she expressed her liking for it and even offered some to the guard. She then acknowledged the necessity of quickly adapting and pretending as if everything was normal. The guard grew more concerned as Charlie's ingested more medicine than required. From a distance, she noticed a familiar face, Lady Elix. Lady Elix was observed in a dispute with Freya Hawthorne during which she reminded Freya of the kindness her family had shown when taking care of her after her parents' death. Charlie's overheard that Viscount Hawthorne's eldest son was a troublemaker, and witnessing it firsthand confirmed the rumors for Charlie's. Freya was taken aback when Charlie's stealthily approached and further surprised upon recognizing Charlie's. With annoyance, Charlie's commented on the excessive noise and questioned if Freya understood how to converse quietly in public. As Freya attempted to retort, he faltered, feeling intimidated by Charlie's presence. Charlie's then suggested that if he had nothing to say, he could leave, as she still needed to speak with the lady. Following a moment of silence, Charlie's offered some medicinal candies to Lady Elix, as she seemed to be struggling with caring for her cousin. Rosetta Elix had recently lost her parents and was now tasked with managing a large family on her own. Her uncle, Viscount Hawthorne, driven by ambition, had seized the family seal and assumed guardianship over her. Rosetta mentioned that the guardianship period had been extended. Charlize realized that they were exploiting the seal to prolong the guardianship duration. She proposed that if Rosetta wished to contest this, she'd be willing to act as a witness. Rosetta was surprised by Charlize's readiness to testify and inquired about her motives. Charlize replied that she didn't appreciate the situation. Rosetta had arranged to meet Charlize but failed to do so, presumably due to her uncle's objection. Confused, Rosetta questioned the nature of the appointment Charlize was referring to and then recollected their previous conversation. Charlize informed Rosetta that since their last encounter, she had lost contact with her, suspecting that Viscount Hawthorne wanted to limit Rosetta's new relationships. When Rosetta affirmed Charlize's assumption about her uncle's objection, Charlize was immediately infuriated. Charlize's intervention left Rosetta feeling considerably better, for which she expressed gratitude. Later that day, Charlize pondered her attempts to forge a stronger connection with Rosetta. Despite her efforts, Rosetta still regarded her words as insignificant. Duke Reen to notice Charlize's troubled expression and inquired if something had transpired within the capital's guard. Charlize denied any major incident, attributing it to a routine survey. In the course of their conversation, Charlize was taken aback and emotionally questioned her father about a death. Calix inquired about the progress of the investigation into the Imperial Empress. Libin explained that their behavior remained highly unpredictable, and the letter had passed through many hands, making it challenging to trace. Curiously, Libin asked about the Fairy Empress's status. Calix still needed to confirm one more thing to ascertain whether the Fairy Empress was truly deceased. Approximately a month prior, an anonymous letter arrived, revealing Sasha's existence. This led them to suspect that the fairy empress might still be alive. While concealing all the facts, the royal family had more taboos than even the aristocrats. Of these, the taboo that instilled the most fear in the royal family was the one associated with bringing ill fortune to the empire. An example was the birth of children after their parents' demise, much like Sasha's situation with his hidden biological mother, the Fairy Empress. In a flashback, the Fairy Empress mentioned that it had been a decade since she had given birth and requested that Sasha be acknowledged as the son of the Empress's concubine. The late Emperor granted this request while shedding tears as he witnessed the Empress's final moments. After the funeral, they took Sasha to the Empress concubine's residence, unknowingly, and everything seemed to be going smoothly. The former emperor intended to reveal Sasha's biological mother when the opportunity arose. However, not long after, he also succumbed to an illness of unknown origin. The news of the fairy empress and Sasha's demise had spread. If this were all part of someone's scheme, Calix needed to promptly confirm the fairy empress's existence. The following day, Charlize paid Sasha another visit, greatly delighting him. Sasha confessed feeling nervous about the exhibition and inquired about Charlize's well-being. Despite having numerous questions, Sasha received patient answers from Charlize and expressed gratitude for her concern. Charlize asked if Sasha would allow her to show him around the garden as a gesture of gratitude. Sasha's face lit up, and he happily accepted Charlize's invitation. During their stroll, Charlize felt uneasy as the Duke trailed behind them. Calix then asked if his presence bothered her. Nervously, Charlize replied that it didn't and that he was free to observe. Sasha repeatedly inquired about the different flowers in the garden. 
When he pointed to a flower named Lysianthus, Calix revealed that it was his favorite, surprising both Sasha and Charlize. Gradually, Charlize realized that the flower bed they were standing on was where she had planted the flowers back when she used to stalk Calix. Calix thanked Charlize for allowing him to tour the princess's forest. In Sasha's perception, feelings were blossoming between Charlize and Calix, greatly exciting him. Sasha then took Libin's hand, suggesting they greet the Duke, and left Charlize and Calix alone to enjoy their private time. Once Sasha and Libin departed, silence hung between Charlize and Calix. To dispel the tension, Charlize mentioned that the servant she had interrogated was now deceased, sharing the name. Calix remarked that Charlize must have been taken aback. Charlize reassured him, explaining it was an opportunity to reaffirm her commitment to protect her father. Certainly, Charlize didn't anticipate the Empress to act hastily. Before the Empress made another move, Charlize needed to strategize her response. As she gazed at Calix once more, she envisioned another future. After a while, Calix and Sasha left the mansion. Charlize still questioned why she had glimpsed the future again and asked if she truly had the ability to foresee events. Entering her room, Charlize penned down the guidelines for seeing the future. She stipulated that if she were to glimpse the future through the Grand Duke, he would undoubtedly be a part of it. Charlize realized that she could only foresee the future involving the Grand Duke and not other characters from the original novel. Her plan now was to encounter someone who appeared in the original but hadn't been introduced yet, a candidate for the role of Calix's fiancé, Labette Ronanis. Will Charlize ever know the secrets behind her ability to see the future? Find out next time.